Hey guys, and welcome back to Atom. So, I did figure out how to use our skills. I know, such a key feature. But we do know how to do it. So, we can click on things. And if I hold the button, uh, then this thingy pops up and with all the options we can do. <clears throat> so, this should be just fine. This also allows us to pickpocket people. Not sure if I want to do it right now. I still don't know. Is there a way to sneak? I don't think... Yeah, there's stealth. Yeah. Hide from others by stealing their possessions. I think that kind of goes hand in hand with pickpocket. I'm not sure if you want to try pickpocketing people. What if I try to pickpocket... Oh crap, that's not what I wanted. Um... No, I can't do it. <laughs> so, let's try it out. Let's try to pickpocket him. Take all his rupees. All of it. Oh, crap. That that was a friendly warning? Is he still friendly? He, it seems like he is still friendly. <clears throat> so, we kind of got lucky here. What if I try to... Oh, crap. I didn't want to wake him up. Ah, this is awkward now. Let's just go. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, we can do the same thing here. And uh, we can use the thingy on the generator. We couldn't fix the generator. No luck. But it worked now. Yeah, it's ordered fixed. And we can turn it on. Right? You turn the handle, but the sink doesn't work. Maybe you need to fix the pump first. I did fix the pump. Oh yeah, we need to turn it on. And then use it. I suppose <clears throat> there's no Michael Bay explosion here. It, j it just works, right? It just works. Also, <clears throat> the character tab. I'm not sure if I'm gonna spend any of my points right now. But we have the ability tree. I kinda wanna pick up the skill points. So that's what we're gonna go toward. Uh, we are not quite there, but that's where I'm going. There are many uh, combat skills we can pick up as well. So, what do you say? I fixed the pump. Yeah, it's done! <clears throat> oh, is that so, comrade? I don't believe it. Is there really a person in this cruel, war-wounded world that has the professionalism and strength to lend the helping hand to this suffering community? Oh my god, why you said that you could just vent out and... <laughs> just to check. It was the pleasure. It was my pleasure, but how about my payment? Because, you know... Hey lady, we almost believed that you were an honest woman. I mean, a kind of woman that won't demand anything for helping out the community. Um... <clears throat> well, I spent... My time to help you guys out. I think it's only fair. Well, that can be help. What are we asking? What are you asking as compensation? All I can offer you is a sum of money. It's not a lot, but it's not a little either. Take it or leave it. There are many fools in the world you can still con. Here, 50 rubles. Why you hate me? That's not even enough for me to buy back the materials I used. You know, all the duct tape and those transistors? Oh yeah, let's just do speechcraft. Is this how you treat the working class around here? If I were your mechanic, I would also leave. <clears throat> it's because of gold riggers like you that capitalism is rearing its ugly head again. Here, 25 rubles more. That is all I have left. Thanks anyway, I better leave. Wow. Also, now we can... Oh, I can't steal it, can I? Also, now we can uh, unlock things, I suppose. I can't take this, right?
Okay, we, we shouldn't press our luck here. We, we probably just don't want to mess with them. Uh, what about this guy who's sleeping? <clears throat> can, can he say anything useful? Before you stands a thin, middle-aged man with a bony complexion. He's wearing a camo shirt and old track pants. On his head sits a Panama hat. His sunburnt visage projects immense boredom and fatigue. Hey, can I ask you some <clears throat> questions? The man smiles and nods. In his dim eyes, there's a spark of interest for a moment. Just for a moment. How's life out here? We work hard, mostly. It's just been a couple of years since me and my vice moved here. <clears throat> In comparison with most other villages, this is a real paradise. Even the name, Otradnoi, suits it. I'll take your word for it. The man looks at his blistered hands, quietly sighs. Well, it's a paradise by the standard of this crapsack world anyway. Sure is. Uh, <clears throat> can I ask you any more questions? Yeah, yeah, I'm all ears. Heard any rumors? One traveling preacher, one of those crazies you know, the type that traveled the world, gather garbage and speak nonsense. Well, he told me that once he heard a strange noise in the sky and looked up. You won't believe it, but he said he saw an eagle. It was flying circles in the air. With him was a snake. Not as prey, but as a friend. It had wrapped, wrapped its body around the eagle's neck. That preacher told me that in that moment he was ecstatic. He said that the proudest animal brought the smartest animal and both of them had traveled to look upon him and see if he was still alive. This is a really great story, really gripping me. <clears throat> the, mal the man looks into the dusty beyond. He was crazy, sure, but he made me think. Am I alive? Or am I just a shell? A body without a soul, a machine? I don't know. The man turns to you and coughs uh, shyly. It's obvious he's feeling awkward about his long speech and for showing his emotions. Oh yeah, that's just completely inappropriate, man. <clears throat> well, can I ask something else? I guess that's it. I think I'll leave for now. I'm gonna wake up your wife too. I think. Before you stands an older woman with a straight back and a strict face. In her gaze you detect concealed sorrow and the glimmer of intelligence. Hey, can I ask you some questions? <clears throat> the woman smiles, more with her eyes than her mouth. It seems your personality has won her What personality? I literally just woke her up in the middle of the night and said, can I ask you some questions? I suppose I was kind of polite about it. I'm all ears. <clears throat> Tell me about yourself. The woman looks at you with distrust at first, but it seems you made a good impression. It seems she now trusts you enough to speak her mind. Wow. How did I make a good impression? If you woke me up in the middle of the night, you wouldn't make a good impression, I'll tell you that. There's nothing to say about yourself, um, I mean, <clears throat> myself. I live here with my husband, I work like all the rest. And before the war, before the war, I was a government official, part of the city council. I knew, my, I knew many wonderful people, poets, prose writers, scientists they were. Me, my husband and I, that is, helped many publish their works. Those who were not allowed to appear in print had their works copied and shared by hand. Oh, where are those people now? I'm afraid they left us forever. That's a bummer. Anything else? Any rumors? I don't follow rumors too much. In my opinion, doing so is right. Well, I should go.
Seems like they're not gonna give me <clears throat> anything. And I think we are kinda done in this place. I'm not sure if I should say that. But I think that's... It's kinda true. Oh, isn't this locked? Oh, that's a radio transmitter? Okay. Didn't know what, what it was. <clears throat> so, I can't... Wait. How much XP I have? So, very close to leveling. I can't do much here. As far as I know. There's a thingy here. Uh, yeah. Over here... Uh, there's a safe, but we don't have uh, the combination for it, <clears throat> so that's a bit of a bummer, and other than that, we just need to leave, basically, uh, so uh, let's do just that. It's about them time to explore the world and do my actual mission. But I suppose the mission is just something we're gonna do eventually. It's all about the side tracking. The adventure while you're having an adventure. Oh, I like this. <clears throat> so, uh, actually, I would like to talk about this a little bit. Just, just in general. I can actually open up the map. So, there's a lot of emphasis on open world games these days but i feel like that's not always great because these type of games like you all you're only getting an experience if there's something there like abandoned factory great like if you're getting attacked you're having an experience like some kind of a uh, adventure <clears throat> and in open world games in order to make it fun like they need to work at it like super hard Okay, where are we going though? So we can go to the abandoned factory. This is where the bandits are. Krasno. This is our long, uh, well, long-term destination. And we also have bunker three one seven, uh, which I can check out. General Morozov's expedition. We need to find bunker three one seven. I think we might start with the abandoned factory. It's closest, so I wager that it's probably... Wait, what? I'm super hungry? Hmm. Can I eat now? Can I just eat something that's less dumb? Like, um... Seven. Seems like eating raw meat is fine. Yep, that, that worked. Raw meat is just good for me. Oh, I can also camp. <clears throat> also, there's a setting. Apparently to speed up the combat. But that's just the battle speed. I don't think that affects the speed on the minimap. Yeah. We are pretty slow on the minimap. <clears throat> An ordinary... Waste Dweller walks your way. Want to talk to him? Why not? Well, I could think of some reasons why not. Don't shoot, I'm harmless. Bullshit. Let's inspect him. You see Traveler. Can we pickpocket him? <clears throat> Whoa! Really? You see a skeleton tin kid in a protective face mask. He lifts his pants up and gives you a courteous bow. Hey, what's your name? What's your job? What? Where are you heading? Wow, so many questions. Do you really just like, just start hammering with the questions? That's just... What's your name? People call me Maxim Romanov. What's your job? I'm a simple official from Paragon. Not a minute of calm with this job. Nothing more to say. <clears throat> Where are you heading? 
I go to Fogolevka. Get it? No. You heard something interesting? Ka -ka -ka! I heard that in Chernobyl, the unthinkable is happening. Locus found a shiny metal in their village, and since then mutations started to occur among them. Get it? What the fuck? You're very annoying. There's nothing here. What do you got? Holy crap! Isn't that a good knife? It seems like a good knife. Can we kill him? Like that that is an upgrade for my weaponry, no? Free AP. I think we gotta need the shovel. Uh, uh, this is combined worth that much. And one to five. This seems like a good pickup, the knife. What if we buy his knife, then you kill him with it. Then we kill him with it. Wait, what? Shiv. Oh, Shiv is pretty interesting. So, it has four average damage. And two AP to do it. Breakage chance? Oh, man. Oh, mate. So, the Shiv can break. Let's use skin animals. We can't use the Shiv. We have to use the knife. Because it doesn't break. Oh, plus one luck. But only works if I'm dumb. Sure. Cheese. Hmm. Corn? Corn meat? Isn't that, like, cheap? Like, ten, ten rupees uh, for meat. Sure. I think he's paying less for the waste paper. This guy's not paying a lot for my stuff. Babushka scarf. What if I give him stuff, then I kill him for that stuff? Oh, does he even have? Uh, rupees? He doesn't seem to. I do want to use the knife. I believe that's going to be uh, an upgrade. Okay, let's close trade. <clears throat> okay, I should go now. So, we have the kick. And I'm not sure about... Yeah, 3 to 4 for 4 AP. But I bought a knife. Wait, I did buy a knife. Where is the knife? Come on, game. Oh, Okay, it's here. So, 2 to 4. 4 free. Definitely an upgrade. Except for the fact that I'm actually worse with melee, but it's definitely an upgrade. Huh, okay. Melee, here we go. I don't have enough melee weapons to use it uh, properly. Do I want to up my melee weapon skill a little bit? Think, I think I'm gonna need some melee. I'm not sure. With knives, axes, and shifts. We might have to do it. So, this way, I can actually use that... Uh, that knife properly. Maybe it's a bad idea. Who knows. But I just go with it. So, we can use that knife, but can we use that knife to kill this sucker? Wait, he has a dog? Oh, doggy! What if you attack him? If he kills us, that's like totally fair enough. But I'm kind of curious what happens. I can try to shoot... hit him in the head. Ooh, that's, that's good. Ooh, that hurt. Oh boy. 
There's no way I can kill the dog. He's he's only injured. Rip in peace. So attacking random dudes. If I was a bigger badass, <clears throat> then I could actually rob people. But uh, damn, I need more action points. I need one more action points to attack three times with the knife. That would be good. But actually, I, I suppose I can go for, for aim shots. So that's not too bad. <clears throat> Might be worthwhile. Especially if I uh, get better at using the knife. <clears throat> Might be the best way to do it. So anyway, uh, let's just leave this area. I bought a knife from him. Which is a plus, I guess. Also bought one bullet. <laughs> which is one more than we had previously. Wow, so slow. Does, does it matter that I see like a truck here? I don't think it matters. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So I need to go to the factory. You're being followed by a small pack of hungry wolves. If you won't do anything, they will surely attack you. Um, well, I, I can try to escape. It didn't work. <laughs> Holy crap, I hope they don't kill me. Ooh, this looks bad. Can I try to run away from this fight? Apparently that's an option. What if I hit the wolf once with the slash? only injured but I feel like there's a chance that we're gonna get attacked yeah that's so bad <laughs> oh man we got ripped apart one turn one bloody turn we got ripped apart because we went for one slice oh my god oh it's it's day now <laughs> okay we definitely need to get better at fighting So we are good at talking, kind of, but we are definitely not good at anything else. Uh, is slash better? If I go for a slash attack? Costs more AP, so I don't know. I will see. Oi, bandits! I came here so you guys can kill me. Is it locked? Some wires. Controls. Shouldn't I have an auto loot thingy? Yeah. We're not gonna use X. Wait, what? That, that should be fine. <clears throat> I want to use E for that. I guess we're gonna get a lot of buyers here. At least it's consistent. We're not finding like a... I don't know. Like a corpse in there. Oh no. He has a gun. I'm not sure if uh, putting points in melee was like really a great idea, but I think momentarily, for now, that's the only way uh, I can actually have a, a, a chance in a fight. So many guys with guns. Holy crap. Okay. <clears throat> I can't go past this. Seems like I just need to walk up to the front gate and uh, say that, Hey, what's up? I want to join up as a bandit. But I'm kind of dressed like a tourist. And I have my knife out. I don't know. What's up, guys? <clears throat> Before you stands a grim man with trimmed hair. He's wearing a black padded jacket. 
Upon seeing you, he spits on the ground in front of you and gets a better grip on his uh, better assault rifle. He eyes you coldly. Hello, girl. What brings you here? I'm traveling, alright? That's how I found this place. <laughs> Is that any fucking... Yeah, I don't think we should be uh, uh, mean to him. Uh, he's just gonna kill us. I'm traveling, alright? That's how I found this place. Oh, what a traveler you are. Uh, what are you doing? What are you looking for here anyway? Does this card tell you anything? Oh, I don't know. That could be tricky. The man looks at the card and smirks. After that, he takes his card from... He takes his hands from the assault rifle and makes a few steps toward you. Well, I see you have the papers. This is getting interesting. Where did you get them? Uh, Krasno? <clears throat> Mm. Nope, not there. Oh, I see. So, how did you get it? An angel brought it to you in your dream. You're making no sense here, girlfriend. These cards are made exclusively by the thugs from Krasno. It was given to me. You got some weird gifts, man. I don't really care, though. Come on now. You can see that I ain't no fool. <laughs> really? Uh, my work. I'm butch, you see. Look at these guns. You definitely need me. Um, I suppose that could work. I'm an ace car player. Someone like me will always prove himself worthy. I'm not stupid. That kind of person is needed everywhere. Uh, person with their intellect could work. You wink at the man and give him your best smile. He unconsciously smiles back at you. Seems like you passed through his skepticism. Fine, fine. Just remember, we are not really bandits around here. More like the local police. Our boss, Dan, even spoke to the Chamber of Commerce of Krasno on the matter of officially accepting us as lawmen. Hmm. We'll be guarding the northern border, get it? Soon we won't have to loot the homes of nearby peasants. We will tax them. All proper like. <laughs> no punk will be able to join our mighty group then. Oh wow, even an idiot would see right through your bullshit. You're nothing but bandits. Come on, don't say that. Oh, on the contrary, a girl with a criminal past is just what you need. The man looks at you with a smirk. Look at you getting all jumpy. I'm laughing at you, but there's always a place for a kick-ass bro on our squad. Consider this an amnesty. Sounds good to me. So how about that job now? It's none of my business. Go see Dan. Dennis, uh, Dennis Savage. He's our boss. Ask him. He's in uh, that house behind uh, my back. He holds office there. Tell him you came from Kosoi, and maybe he'll give you some work. Thanks, can I ask you something now? Go ahead, why the hell not? Same bloody options everywhere. How my heart things, my man? The man smiles slightly and scratches his head. <clears throat> huh, well, I'm standing here, keeping guard over the camp. Some good air in these parts, both day and night. Right, may I ask you something else? Tell me about yourself. They call me Kosoi. I work for Dan. Started even before the war. After I got into Juvie. It's kind of a sad story, if you think about it too hard. What about Dan? He's a great guy, although he's not really uh, one of the high-ranking thieves. He has a vision, you know. A plan for all of us. I see. What about this place? It's an old, dilapidated uh, factory. Hell if I know what they made around here. Bricks, I think. Now it's our base of operations. Our little army rests here. Between our valiant attempts to rescue local villagers, villages from all kinds of trouble. Interesting. So what's the news around here? Some say the Atom Organization is a, a real thing after all. 
I always thought only fools believed it to be true, but the other day I saw a large troop of soldiers with my own eyes. They were passing through the Otradnoi village, and they weren't from uh, Krasno or any place I know of. Yeah, real food for thought. Wow! Okay, I think I better go. They are not part of the Atom. So I'm like a secret agent. Wow, that dude doesn't even have a shirt on. What a pleb. What's up, dude? You see a half-naked tin man with an empty stare. He looks at you without blinking. His body is covered with different intricate tattoos. Probably of prison origin. Hey, can I ask you some questions? Instead of reply, the man first loudly sniffs and spits to the side. He nods only after that. How's life, pal? Wow, this is gonna be a great conversation. The man sniffs again without saying anything. You lose all hope of getting a reply before he finally starts talking. His voice sounds like it's coming from far away. <clears throat> it's like a dream! Where, how, what, what does that sound like? It's far away. I don't know. It's like, whatever. I'm just gonna go with my normal voice. <clears throat> it's like a dream. No, this is not my normal voice. Whatever. We're gonna go with that. After I've been robbed, I figure I'll be a good idea to. It'll be a good idea to treat my wounds with some tranks. So, what were you asking? Don't really matter, my man. Can I ask you something else? Tell me about this place. Tell me about this place. I should slow down a little bit. Uh, the man looks around and blinks. He then turns to you and says, What? I mean, what do you want to know? I'm, huh? Damn! Stop distracting me, woman. I am maintaining order at this factory. Our factory. Um, what are you busy with? The man touches his face. Seems like he forgot his body shape since he looks surprised afterwards. Hey! Come on! What do you think? I'm some kind of junkie? I just haven't slept very well, that's all. I'm here! All gardening and stuff! Walking around doing something? What am I doing, by the way? Oh, gardening here! Can you see? <clears throat> some rumors you know about, maybe? The man livens up slightly and gives you a semblance of a smile. You notice his teeth are rotten, most are blackened, some are gone completely. Ha! Huh. Have you heard about the Hypnotoad? I have. <laughs> I've seen the TV shows that those ass clowns from Krasno are, are running to brainwash local simpletons. You wouldn't believe that nonsense. Propaganda workers. What was they? What was that saying? Life is for the thieves. Life is for the pigs. <laughs> Forgot. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the information, man. Uh, nice, nice chatting. Whoa. Two guys here. You see a tall, strong man in his 40s. He's armed with and dressed like s many of his comrades in the bandit camp, but one little detail sticks out. On the sleeve of his thick jacket is a sunburn tag with blood type. It's obviously came from some sort of uniform. Seeing you approach, the man glances at you as, you, as if evaluating your worth. You have some business. You better speak to my boss. I just want to chit chat a bit. Yeah, I'm listening. What's your name? How are you doing? Taras uh, Gandarenko. But if you want to fit in here, I just, just call me Sarge. I used to be a sergeant long time ago. Now it's my nickname here among the guys. And I won't be able to shake it off. As to how my life is, no one has it easy nowadays, am I? Right? <laughs> sure. A soldier, eh? I can respect that. Can you answer some more questions? Uh, what can you tell me about this place? <laughs> ah, rookies. Look around. This is a great place. Well fortified, that's one. Stands in a strategically advantageous uh, place. That's two. We can cover most of the ground from here. That's free. And the rest? I don't know. I guess it was some factory before the war. Probably make bricks here. 
deep butts. Wow! That's some knowledge! You're a real master strategist, a god of war. Can you grace me with some more answers? Hmm. I think... Well, he probably should get insulted by that, but he's probably gonna ignore that. Wait. Are you making some kind of... Girl jokes at my expense? Is that... Your way of being funny? Are you playing me for a fool? And I just a figure of speech, no offense. The man is watching you with suspicion. He scratches his unshaven cheek and finally waves at you, which means that's all good. Uh, can I ask you some questions? What you doing? My main assignment is to guard the, our boss, Dan. It is because of him that I'm stuck in this den of thieves. Believe me or not, but this man is a natural born leader. I'm pretty sure that banditry is just a passing phase for him. But the real goal is to bring back law and order, even if just in a couple of uh, local villages. Uh, interesting. I don't know. I wish exploring these conversation options were a little bit more satisfying. Uh, let's just go for the hat. Yeah, we're gonna go and pick up the hat. Uh, that should help. Also, we got a lot of action points to spend. But I already have enough speech craft, I believe. Uh, that should be fine for now. So, <clears throat> this is Dan? Holy fuck. Before you stands a tall man in a dusty suit with a leather holster on his hip. He looks nothing like the rest of the men out here in the abandoned factory. He stands straight. His head is combed. His eyes radiate intelligence. On seeing you, he fixes his tie and says in a calm, measured tone. <clears throat> I'm listening. Are you Denis... Uh, Denisovich? Exactly him. And you are? But give me your real name. Not an alias. What the hell? Okay. Um. Denis Denisovich pets his large mustache and looks you straight in the eye. You start feeling uncomfortable. He almost peers straight into your soul with his cold gaze. I'm babe. <laughs> the leader nods and takes a small notebook from his jacket pocket to write down your name with a pencil. He hides the notebook and looks at you, obviously expecting you to continue the conversation. Phew! That's fucking great. We gave him our real name. <laughs> he got us now. <laughs> I'm here because Kosoi sent me. He said I could ask you about a job. Oh, I see. So why did Kosoi decide you'd be right for us? Because we only draft a certain kind of people. It's no place for an ordinary girl. <clears throat> I had a thief's passport. Oh yeah. I'm quite good at thieving. That's right. Damn, so you're one of those. Well, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. So you're looking for a job? That's right. Should've put you on the cleaner duty. Should we put you on the cleaner duty? Just kidding. Come on. Well, as long as it's cleaning our banks, am I right, Dan? High five. The boss clicks his tongue. I have just the job for you. A test assignment, to be exact. <clears throat> Look, now go to the main production facility. We set up a barrack there. In the production facility, look for the locked door. There are two men in front of it. Talk to the big man. He'll tell you what to do next. I'll, okay, I'll do it. I'll, it will be done. I'll be back soon. I like your eagerness. Go, and come back here when you're finished so we can discuss your future. Sure thing, uh, Dan. <clears throat> Maybe I'm not gonna explore that many conversation options because I feel like they are just not extremely satisfying for the most part. 
A bald bearded man wearing a pre-war tracksuit standing in front of you. He start staring intently at the ground as uh, though his shaven head is troubled by some heavy thoughts. However, as he feels you approaching him, he flinches and speaks to you first. His voice sounds almost timid. <clears throat> oh, hi there, what's up? What are you beefing about, big guy? <laughs> wow. That's one way to say hi. The man looks around him nervously and turns back to you. A fake smile appears on his face. Yeah, it's nothing. Do I, do I look sad? Why would you even think that? <laughs> Come on, you can tell me. I can keep a secret. The man only shakes his head and lowers his gaze. I don't think I should force it with strength. I better get go. Wait, wait, look. I have a question. Then, um, you look like a person I can trust. Let's listen. I've got this question to ask you. Yes, I've told you already. In brief, it's sort of a delicate matter. Sensitive even. I'm counting on some uh, tactfulness. Yes, it's very complicated. Let me see how to approach it. I can present this issue in the most appropriate manner to avoid any misunderstanding, but at the same time to do it with taste and decency. Just come on, spill it. Because stunning someone like that is also very wrong. I'd say it's criminal, criminal even. Um, <laughs> just a moment. Look. I just need to verbalize my idea to make it concise and precise. Tap your nail on the face of your watch. Hurry up, I don't have all day. Well, to make long story short, have you ever thought of hitting on another girl? Like in that sense for amorous affairs? Um, okay, what is your point? As soon as the man fires out the words, he blushes violently. <laughs> what? What are you got? Jeez, what are you asking? Can, can I just be fully into it? Well, it, it happened to me. I won't deny it. You, Darren. I mean, don't get me wrong. You see, I, I on the contrary have never noticed these tendency in myself before. Just that that's how it is. Ooh, I see. The bearded guy looks around and bends closer to you. Have you seen the lad at the other gate <laughs> to the camp? <laughs> the man casts a quick look to the side and switches to whisper. I'm not talking about the Kosoi. We got Sasha by the second gates, and there's this little lad who's running around him all the time. He's wearing a mask and a hat. Damn it. I just had this thought that, well, damn, I mean, in short, I just had this thought about his lad. If you know what I mean, I mean, um, <clears throat> and now it bugs me. I don't really care about your sex preferences. Do you fancy the lad? What's so bad about it? These things happen. I guess he's uh, like a bad boy here. So, like, is is that a kid though? Because we're calling him a pervert? Um, do we know that? Lad running around him all the time. Maybe I should feel a little bad for encouraging him to pursue a boy. Uh, that doesn't seem uh, right. The last thing he needs is like a push in the wrong direction. Do you fancy the lad? Well, I wouldn't call him a pervert for uh, desiring a man. So, do you fancy the lad? What's so bad about it? These things happen. Well, I'm glad you're so open-minded about it, but I'm afraid the rest of the gang don't share your liberal views. Oh, that's right. 
In Russia, it's not really accepted. The bearded man motions in a wide gesture to the factory yard, where scary looking huge men with sullen faces are <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> ah. I'm not even sure how I feel, no kidding. It's the first time something like this has happened to me. I mean, I, I don't even know what to do in a situation like this. I'm sure you're mistaken. You should admit your sexual orientation. I guess your colleagues won't appreciate it indeed, but I'm sure that there are places in the wasteland where you'll be welcomed. Talk to this lad, test the waters. That, that's it. Oh, don't rub it in. I won't be doing all that. If he spills the beans, one word will lead to another, but eventually I'll be beaten by everyone at the factory. I can guarantee that. Look around once more. Oh no, be better I figure something out myself. Suit yourself, it's your business? No! I wanna uh, intimidate him or just threaten him. If he doesn't talk to him, I will. The bearded man coughs embarrassedly and snivels. So now that I got this awkward load off my chest, maybe there was something else you want to discuss? What the fuck? And now I should just go back to normal questions? The man sighs and nods reluctantly. It's evident that your natural charm has worked on this sad guardsman. I said you go for it. If that's what you want, you go get it. Girl, woman, man, whatever. What are you doing here? Tell me about yourself, mate. Yeah, I don't know if I wanna listen to all his story. Wow, okay, we're getting some rifle tips now. Thanks. Ah, uh, can't argue with that. Let's go. Okay. I think maybe they should have, because th this is the thing that kind of comes back to the point about fast travel. Not fast travel, but like uh, just open world and uh, compared to like this whole, uh, the system that Fallout 1 and 2 has, uh, and also this game, is that I feel like the developers in this game tried to make all NPCs uh, viable as a, as, a, as a NPC you can talk to. But by doing that, uh, not, well, I think the quality suffered a little bit here. Because not, not all of them have something interesting to say. And you often just uh, fire the same questions. Hmm. More, oh, we got. We should look for the guy and tell him uh, that he has a secret admirer. Oh, this is the man. You see a tall man with mustache, dressed in a sports jacket, an assault rifle in his hands, look like a, a toy, and his uh, wide smile invites conversation. Hey, can I ask you a question? What? 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 Why not? Ask what? What are you doing here? Or things in general? Oh, more. This is not gonna work. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to understand. I recently got back from patrolling the area, safe and sound. Isn't that great? I even found something during my patrolling. It was so heavy that I barely managed to carry it here. That's what I call luck. Every time I go on a patrol, I find something. Is that right? I meet someone. It's good to be lucky. Can I ask you something? Um, tell me some rumors. You know, I trust you. Why? I think I can share something with you. Look, to the north from here, there's an old pier. I know that there's a stash hidden inside. Its owners ain't coming back. Don't ask why, it's just how it is. You can dig around in their loot. What? I don't have time to do it myself, but I don't want the stuff just to lie there. Forgotten. Sure! I can't stand waste either! 
So... Right, here, just remember, not to go there at night. They say at night one can meet various dangerous geezers there. They can whack you. Oh, thanks. Well, that, that was nice. What about you? Oh, that that's not a lad. You see a skinny lad. Oh, lad. It, it kind of looks like a woman, just, just based on that. Uh, who watches you closely from under a red scarf that covers his face. His eyes are inexplicably sad. Are you sad because the other guy doesn't like you? Can I ask you a question? Hello, what do you want? It's a woman! The boy's voice is high, but he does his best to make it sound deeper, which only results in it sounding more funny. I know you're a woman! How could you... Who are you? You don't look like uh, the local folk. <clears throat> I'm... Do... My name is Dima. I'm a gangster too. <laughs> Burst into laughter, are you indeed a gangster? Have you been talking... Taking candies from your younger kids? Or writing bad words on the farm's walls? Uh, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, I have another question. Should we question it? Aren't you a bit too young to associate with gangsters? I'm not. I can blow um, your brains out anytime. Um, I don't know if you managed to save that. But at least you tried to. The boy's eyes dart around. His voice cracks. Wait a second, you're hiding something. Tell me what's wrong. The boy shout. Uh, the, the boy shoots a quick look at the mustache guard at his side. He shakes his head, but to no avail. The boy pants, then suddenly lowers his head and briskly at tears off his scarf. It's a girl! Who would have thought? Now it's a young woman who stands next to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. F fucking busted you in two minutes. <clears throat> Don't you want to do this in like... That, but the other guard knows now. <clears throat> Surprised? Uh, my name is Ad Abdotia. Or Danya. Uh, if you prefer. I'm sick and tired of hiding. It's so hard to pass yourself off as a man. People side-eye me and steer clear of me already, as if afraid uh, they'll catch something bad from me. Wow, that was so expected! The mustache guard shakes his head and readjusts his assault rifle so that it is more comfortable to grasp. Then he starts paying closer attention to your conversation. The girl looks at him affectionately and turns to you. Wow, really? You're into that guy? I fell in love. It was love at first sight, just like in fairy tales. I ran away from home with him. What? Really? Why are you sharing me this? I think people are just way too quick to trust. Like, that's not how people are. A little bit feels like people are just like waiting for the troubles, uh, so for their troubles to be solved by me and just tell me stuff. Okay, wow. Um, well, I have to say he's a bad influence. She points at the mustache guard and he gives you a barely perceptive, uh, perceptible nod. It wasn't until I saw the place that I realized what I had got into. But it was too late to change anything. We decided I would dress as a man to be at his side. He's with gangsters now, but he's a nice guy. He's no gangster himself, really. They simply were the first people he bumped into when he had no food or weapon, so he stayed with them. Yeah, the thing is... I get it, you know? Not, no one starts out as a gangster. But you can become a gangster. Even if you just say you like playing alone. 
Like, if you just stay, play along for, for some time, like, it, it's not gonna take long to be a gangster. You're gonna get comfortable with this. So... Yeah, you need to get, get the hell out. Why do you pretend to be a man? There are all kinds of folk here, for the most part. They are not really bad, but there are people you wouldn't want to meet in a dark street. And there are also others whose souls have long since become callous. It goes with the job, I guess. How did you meet? The girl sighs and lowers her eyes. It's hard to tell if she's happy or sad. I live with my father then. He would repair cars and agricultural equipment, did his best to fix what was broken, and I looked after the house and the garden. The moustache guard comes to you and holds the girl by the shoulders. She grabs onto his hands and looks back at you. Monster Village had guests. These were Sasha and his guys. They had heard through the grapevine that Dennis Danny Savage, Dan, was hiring, so they decided to join his gang. They set up a camp near the village and brought their car to have it fixed, and asked the chief for directions, of course. <clears throat> the mustache guard winks and says, I'm Sasha, nice to meet you. You nod know in response, meanwhile the girl goes on with her story. As my dad worked in the village car repair shop, they turned to him for help. While he was Crouching under the bonnet, Sasha and I chatted a bit. I liked him straight away. So did he. I don't know. It seems a bit too quick. Uh, what happened next? He told me stories of the wasteland and big cities and different villages and forests and mountains and people. And people. People. Uh, he offered a whole new world to me. The world I hadn't known even existed. Yeah. But, in a way... Like, are you really running away for him? Or are you running away for the adventure of the world? Because it kind of seems like uh, you're not running away for him. Like... The girl sighs again and squeezes Sasha's hand tighter. But father would never allow me to set out on a journey. And and I decided I would run away. It was a spontaneous uh, decision. I didn't think twice. So early in the morning, I got in their car and left. Onward to the sunrise. I understand the road is tempting, especially when you're young. Okay, that's... that's... Um, Okay, observation, to be honest, you didn't treat your father well. <clears throat> but I understand. Because if she tried to convince her father, then her father would have probably, if he could have, uh, not allowed her to go. Which I, I could totally understand as well, because running away with a bandit? If my daughter tried to do that, screw you, you're getting... Uh, um, locked up in your room, I guess. I don't know. But ultimately, like, this is not... This is the apocalypse. Like, I'm all for making mistakes, I suppose. I guess. But this could be a, a fatal one. This could be the last mistake you make. <laughs> so... Ah... <sighs> Yeah, you didn't treat your father very well. I know. You wanted me to say it? Yes, it's true. And it's my fault. I admit it. I get it, though. But I haven't seen Dad for so long. He doesn't know I'm alive. I'm safe. I did a bad thing. I left him alone and have no idea how he's getting on. Tears fell in Dunya's eyes. Look, if I meet your father, I can give him a message from you. No, you have to do the message yourself. 
Chances are he's dead already, you know how cruel the wasteland can be. What? That's not what I want to say. Game, allow me to say what I want to say. Look, if I meet your father, I can give him a message for you. You must travel a lot. I can tell by the look of you. Please do. Please. He is short, has reddish hair, old. But where is he? The girl covers her face with her hands and sobs quietly. If I meet him... Okay. I have more questions? I go looking for him, bye? <laughs> so the other guy is actually just into a woman over here. Uh, what do you do here? I help Sasha to guard the perimeter. I do some house household chores. I do lots of stuff. Look how huge uh, the factory is. Plenty of people. They means plenty of work. <laughs> okay. Now it's time for me to go. What if I try to kill Sasha? Hey. Me and Dunya, we're chilling over here. Can I convince him to leave? Uh, fuck me. Um, how are things in general? Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna leave. God damn it. What a story. Not sure how I, I totally feel about this. So, we kind of explored most of the factory. They're not complete raging uh, assholes so far. So... Oh. It's not too bad. But we still need to explore more. Anyway guys, uh, definitely that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.